Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. So today's topic is glorying in our infirmities, okay? Today's topic, not going to get too in-depth, but we're going to go over some basics, all right? So give me the book of uh, Romans 6 real quick. Let's start right here. Romans chapter 6, and let's start at verse uh, 16. The book of Romans chapter 6. And verse 16. Come on. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey. Uh -huh. Whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. You see that thing right there? So the most High God is saying through the apostle Paul, whoever we decide to listen to or hearken to or obey, that means we have now by default become the servants unto whoever that may be. So, for example, don't we all have uh, lust or vices? I know I do. What about y'all? Do y'all have that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Anybody immaculate? You don't have anything? Everybody immaculate in here? All right, read it again. Watch this. The I want you to focus today. I want everybody to focus. All right, read this. The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 16. Come on. Know ye not that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, mm -hmm. whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. So we have a choice. We have a choice. Who we decide to obey, meaning what? Do we want to be servants of Christ or do we want to be servants of the deceiver? That's the choice that every last one of us has to make, okay? Because when it comes to sin, is it pleasurable? Absolutely. Absolutely. But... Uh, I seen a meme the other day. I seen the meme about a credit card. It was heavy. When it comes to a credit card, you can live it up, right? But eventually you're going to have to do what? You're going to have to pay. Meaning what? That's the same thing with sin. We can live it up and think we're not going to get touched, right? Give me that in Ecclesiastes 8 and 11 real quick. We can live it up, think we're not going to get touched, all right? But eventually we will have to pay. If you're a servant, and you have a master, guess what? You serve and serve and serve. Eventually, you'll get what? Wages. <laughs> you'll eventually get wages or that recompense for your servitude. Okay? So we got to really take a step back and see, okay, am I putting in bricks to, my, to the deceiver or am I putting up heavenly bricks for the kingdom? Okay, read what you got. The book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 8 and verse 11. Come on. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. So this is going into that, that, sinful, that sinful servant, all right, who, who obeys to the deceiver. Come on. Therefore, the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. It's fully set in them to do evil, meaning what? They're putting in pleasurable bricks, meaning what? They're living it up right now, but they're not getting touched. Just because you're not getting touched, that doesn't mean that you won't be. Same thing like this. If you serve Christ and you don't get blessed right away, does that mean that you won't get blessed? So we're going to go on the flip side. So we read Ecclesiastes 8 and 11, showing what? 
you can live it up pleasurably, but eventually you're going to get touched. Now, this is the, um, the flip side of it. Give me, uh, start at verse 10. You read that. The book of Hebrews, chapter 6 and verse 10. Watch this. For God is not unrighteous to forget your work and labor of love. So here's the flip side, okay? That's why we have to, um, what's it called? We have to exercise what we call faith. We have to exercise faith, meaning what? If I keep doing this, eventually I'm going to get a recompense that's going to be favorable for me. But if I, what? If I keep putting in bricks that's starting to make me pleasurable right now, eventually I'm going to feel bricks. I'm sorry, a recompense that's not going to be so pleasurable. That's why it says this, Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Okay. This is why the scripture says what it says. The Bible never told us that this uh, would be easy because we can't even imagine what's in store or what's waiting for us if we hold fast. So we have to focus, brothers and sisters, myself included. Sometimes we could be in this truth, but one, two, three, five, seven, eight, whatever, how many years it may be. And sometimes you can lose focus because you keep doing, you know, the same things, same things. And sometimes you can lose sight. So let's focus and let's let's get back on track. Read what you got. The book of Micah, chapter four and verse 10. Come on. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. You see that thing right there? That is being a servant of righteousness right there. But it's flipped. It's, it's a total role reversal. If we live it up right now and live fat and are luxurious, guess what? The recompense is going to be pain. But if we suffer now and overcome, our recompense is going to be what, brothers? It's going to be pleasurable forever, though. That's the thing about it. Read it again. The book of Micah, chapter 4 and verse 10. Come on. Be in pain. And labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. Mm -hmm. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field, and thou shalt go even to Babylon. There shalt thou be delivered. There we shall be delivered. So, uh, for those of you who have been in the delivery room, or the sisters who bared the children, yeah, it's a grind. Now, can I say I know what that feels like? No, and I thank God for it. That's all right. But shoot, that's why we go out to the streets every week and risk our lives, too. You understand? So everybody got a role to play. Understand that thing. But when I was in that delivery room, I saw the pains. I seen it. But after 20 hours, you know, somebody popped out smiling. And you forget all about that thing right there. I know my wife may not have forgot it as quickly as I did. But you forget and you're like, Dang, that was that was an experience, man. That was I never seen nothing like that before. Hey, think about the kingdom like that. You understand? When you finally get delivered, you've been hearing about it, just like you've been hearing about, hey, that nine months, the baby gonna be here. We've been hearing about 400 years. Eventually we're gonna get out. But when it actually happens, imagine what that would be like. But guess what? We know for a surety, if we don't be in pain through this time, we know we ain't gonna get it. Got something? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Give me Acts chapter 14, verse 22. To show you that uh, there's no way you're going to get to the kingdom without not going through pains and tribulation. All right, give me that. The book of Acts chapter 14 and verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation. Did he say some? Much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. So the scripture tell you plainly through much tribulation that, that you, will, you will be able to enter to the kingdom of heaven. So you can't expect for you to keep God's commandment and everything going to go easy. It's not going to be easy. Just like it tells you in Micah, uh, the fourth chapter, it says be in pain. To consider yourself as if uh, uh, like, like a woman go through when they are delivering, like Kat was just informing you. So this is not going to be a walk in the park. Now, let's go back to Romans 6. I'm going to try to stay on topic. So uh, I want to get this. I want to get like 10 precepts, but I, I want to, you know, hit a few key points. All right, so let's go back to Romans 6. The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 16. Come on. Know ye not 
that to whom ye yield yourselves servants to obey, his servants ye are to whom ye obey, whether of sin unto death or of obedience unto righteousness. Come on. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin. All of us at one point, we were uh, hell bound. We were all servants of sin. All right. But now coming into this truth, understanding what is required of you. All right. And what we have to do to inherit eternal life. Now we got to take a step back and see, are we that same person? Okay. Or are we fooling? I'm sorry. Are we that same person or are we becoming new? Because I always tell y'all it's a difference between battling and succumbing. If you succumb to something, that means you're a servant to it. Your outer appearance may show one thing, okay? But only you, that's why scriptures say examine yourself. Only you know if you're truly battling or if you are a servant, okay? Read this verse again. The book of Romans chapter 6 and verse 17. Come on. But God be thanked that ye were the servants of sin, but ye have obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine which was delivered you. Come on. Being then made free from sin, mm -hmm. ye became the servants of righteousness. That's when, hey, that's when we heard the true gospel. Okay, a lot of us was in the Christian church. A lot of us never went to church or wherever you was at. But when you heard the truth, it did something to you. And you said, you know what? Hey, I can give up what smoking. I can give up drinking. I can give up a lot of these things quick because I know, hey, that's not worth it. But now, now I always got to do this. Now we got to relate it to the truth. Now you got settled. You understand? It's different when you first hear it than to, you know, when you actually walk in this thing. Now you settle. Now put the spotlight back on yourself and see how we align up with these scriptures. Y'all with me? Yes, sir. All right. Read on. Verse 19. Come on. I speak after the manner of men mm -hmm. because of the infirmity of your flesh. You see that? The infirmity of our flesh. That's going into our vices, our hangups, the things that we struggle with on the day to day. Come on. For as ye have yielded your members, servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, uh -huh. even so now yield your members, servants to righteousness unto holiness. So it said the same way you used to be uh, turning up on Labor Day weekend, the same way you used to be in the club, the same way you would be at the football game early. That's how we ought to serve the one true God. That's what it's saying right there. Okay. Uh, read on. Verse 20. Come on. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. You see that? It's saying that when you were the servants of sin, you were all in. That's the thing about it. When you was in the world, you was head first. But a lot of us come in this thing. Give me Revelations, the third chapter real quick. Start at verse 15. Remember, when you was in the world, you didn't, you didn't care. Because that's who you were. You turned, you turned up all the time. All right? But now when you come to the truth, are we the same way we was in the world with it? You understand? Think about that. That's a question for you to answer. You know yourself who you was in the world. Read what you got. The book of Revelation, chapter 3 and verse 15. Come on. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. Come on. I would thou work cold or hot. So Christ is saying right here, he says, pick a side. And through Paul right here in Romans the 6th chapter, he's saying, hey, I, now you know yourself the same way you was in the world. Are you applying that in this truth? Are you gun ho Are you at every event just like you was in the world? Or are you playing games? Read it again. The book of Revelation chapter 3 and verse 15. Come on. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm... And neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So he's saying, hey, you got to make a choice, make a decision. Because when you was wicked, you was all the way in. Now, I know there's going to be some people who's going to say this. When I was in the world, there's just certain things I wouldn't do. Oh, so you kept the new moon? No. You was eating pork, right? So I don't want to hear it. You was wicked as hell. As much as you want to think you was a goody goody, you was the damn devil. Understand that thing right there. Now, all right, go back to Romans 6. The I want to finish. I want to finish. The book of Romans, chapter 6 and verse 19. Come on. I speak after the manner of men because of the infirmity of your flesh. 
For as ye have yielded your members servants to uncleanness and to iniquity unto iniquity, mm -hmm. even so now yield your members servants to righteousness unto holiness. So that's just going into righteous work after righteous work. That's all it's talking about. So, for example, what's an example of sin upon sin? Uh, no, I, I know the scripture. I'm just saying I need an example. So, for example, when you go to the club, that's reveling, right? But then to add some sin to that is what? Getting high in the back, you understand? Or trying to uh, prostitute your sisters. That's adding sin upon sin. So, hey, a lot of people think that just showing up to the Sabbath is enough. Wrong. <laughs> How about when you come through these doors, you put a brick in, and then you treat somebody with some respect. And then if you go through something, you still smile. That's righteousness unto righteousness. Y'all all right? All right, all right. Read on. Verse 20. Come on. For ye, in, excuse me. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. Mm -hmm. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now ashamed? Hey, that's a cut even to myself. It says when we was in the world, we was free from righteousness, so vice versa. So when we in the truth, we shall be 100% free from what? You see that thing right there? That's a part of our examination. It should be... We so head first in this, there should be no outside factor that can affect us. We're saying it, we're reading it, but now we got to literally think about that thing and see how we're measuring up in the scriptures. Okay? Read on. Verse 22. But now being made free from sin and become servants to God, uh -huh. ye have your fruit unto holiness and the end everlasting life. You see that? That's what we aspire to go to now because before we already knew <laughs> what was going to become of us. So now we have something to aspire to be. Now, is it going to happen overnight? Absolutely not. But I'll tell you this. Your effort, now hear me, your effort is going to determine how quickly you get there. I'll say it again. Is this, gonna, this change going to happen overnight? No. But your effort is going to depict on how long it takes you to get there. A lot of brothers and sisters like to go through the motions when they come through the doors. They like to figure it out themselves. That would be the dumbest thing if I paid my tuition to go study uh, chemistry and I walk into the professor's classroom and he says, pull out your notebook and your book. It's like, nah, I'm going to actually, I'm going to sit back. And I, I think I'm going to study this a little bit and try to come up with my own ideology. Now, that guy is an idiot. You know why? Because he just wasted his money. He just wasted his money. A lot of brothers and sisters coming in here, they wasting their money, but it's actually you wasted your life. That's how you got to think about this thing. All right, read that one for us. Proverbs 23 and 23. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 23 and verse 23. Come on. And it reads... Buy the truth and sell it not. You see that thing? It says, buy the truth and sell it not. It's supposed to be valuable and precious. It's supposed to be valuable and precious. Not to the point where somebody tries to show you something in the truth and you say, nah, I'm good. The scripture says, sell it not. The scripture says, sell it not. Read it again. The book of Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 23. Come on. Buy the truth and sell it not. Uh-huh. Also wisdom. And instruction and understanding. It says you're supposed to buy that. You're supposed to bind that thing up. And don't let anybody take it away from you. But a lot of us are careless. And a lot of us really don't appreciate what we have. Okay, you had something? Okay, okay, let's drop that. Let's go back. Uh, give me Proverbs 18 real quick. I'm going to move on uh, past this so we can finish. Today's topic is glorying in our infirmities, okay? Glorying in our infirmities. So we have to make that choice. We got to uh, realize who we're serving. And it's totally depending on us. We are the deciding factor of which side we decide to serve, okay? Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14. The book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14. Come on. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. Now it says, the spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity, meaning what? Your spirit, that is the deciding factor on whether or not you get over your shortcomings or whether you get over that trial. Let me show you something. 
Who's familiar with Ezra or Ezra's, the history there? Anybody? Uh, second Ezra's 14. Let's go here real quick. All right. If you're not familiar, make sure you read it. I'm not going to go through all of it, but uh, yeah, I'm going to touch something real quick. Start at verse. Start at verse 15. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 15. Watch this. And set aside the thoughts that are most heavy unto thee, and haste thee to flee from these times. Come on. For yet greater evils than those which thou hast happened shall be done hereafter. And these are the times we're living in. We're living in, this was evil during uh, the time of Ezra. All right, but the days we're living in is, is even worse. All right, jump down to, no, just keep reading, keep reading. Verse 17. For look how much the world shall be weaker through age. Come on. So much the more shall evils increase upon them that dwell therein. Uh-huh. For the truth is fled far away. So it says, for the truth is fled far away. Meaning what? This is a trial. This is going to be a hard situation to put yourself through. Come on. And leasing is hard at hand. Uh-huh. For now hasteth the vision to come which thou hast seen. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how bad it was during the time of Ezra. Now, remember what it says in Ecclesiastes, uh, the thing that was, how I say, there's, no, there's nothing new under the sun. There's nothing new under the sun. So watch this. Read verse 21. Verse 21. Come on. For the law is burnt. It says what? For the law is burnt. All right. It says, for thy law is burnt. What does that mean, brothers? Uh, let me hear this brother right here. What does that mean? For thy law is burnt. It means in a literal sense, uh, they burnt the laws of God, like they burnt the book. The burnt the, the book, which is what? The laws of God, the commandments. The Bible. Yes, they sir. burnt the Bible. So imagine that. Imagine that. Imagine if we had no Bibles right now. How would y'all feel about that thing? Then you realize, damn, all those times I had a chance to study. Guess what? I'm not going to get that thing. I'm not going to get those times back. All the times, I, hey, they say, hey, you should be reading this. You should be meditating. But now I can't, I can't even go back and do it because there's no Bible. There's no law. So it's to show you how bad it was during the time of Ezra. So knowing that there's nothing new under the sun, what would you put together in this day and age? What will come to your mind? What do you think is going to happen? It's not going to try it. It's not going to be around. But a lot of us, we come through the doors, we play. We be playing around. Okay? Read it again. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 14 and verse 21. Come on. For thy law is burnt. Therefore, no man knoweth the things that are done of thee or the works that shall begin. Read. But if I have found grace before thee. Now watch this. Through all of that chaos and all of those trials, watch what Ezra says. Come on. But if I have found grace before thee, send the Holy Ghost into me. Send what? Send the Holy Ghost into me. Come on. And I shall write all that hath been done in the world since the beginning. You see that thing right there? He says, all right, even though this is complete and utter chaos, he's praying to the Father, what? That he sent his spirit to him. So he can do what? Rewrite the scriptures. Read verse 39. Verse 39. Come on. Then open I my mouth, and behold, he reached me a full cup, which was full as it were with water, but the color of it was like fire. Read. And I took it and drank, and when I had drunk of it, my heart uttered understanding. Come on. And wisdom grew in my breast, uh -huh. for my spirit strengthened my memory. You see, it says his spirit, what was that spirit? The Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ. That was the Spirit that came on the prophet Ezra. Now, let's go back to Proverbs 18 real quick. I'm going to show you something. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm going to show you that Christ has says the same thing in reference of what you were just going into uh, about um, it's not always going to be there. Here's the parable that Christ used. Give me Matthew chapter 25. Uh, I'm going to get straight to the point. <clears throat> verse, jump to verse 8. Read that for me. The book of Matthew chapter 25 and verse 8. And the foolish said unto 
unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. The, the, the understanding behind the oil goes into understanding. They're asking uh, for the wise one because their oil ran out. They were foolish because they did not prepare. They did not study like you have today. What Cap was going over saying to prepare yourself to study while you have the book, while you, while you have the prophets that can teach you God's word. Read. Verse 9. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. He says, Nah, uh this understanding that I have is just for me and my household. I don't have for you. Read. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Now, they, 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 they refer um, them to go out there. And the same way I got the understanding, go learn from those prophets that are um, uh, teaching this word. Read on. Verse 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. It was too late. So time is not given. Time is not promised. While you have the time to learn these scriptures, get into it before it's too late. All praises. Um, officer, read Isaiah 8 and 16 real quick. Going into uh, what the officer just brought out. Proverbs 8. No, no, I said uh, Isaiah 8 and 16. I'm sorry. Watch this. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. Come on. Bind up the testimony. Do what? Bind up the testimony. Read. Seal the law among my disciples. So they were saying, hey, the same way I got this is like officer bring out. You could have got it too. You were supposed to bind this up. You was instructed to do that, to, to study to show yourself approved. But you was playing games. You was too busy being what? A servant of sin rather than a server of righteousness. Okay? Read it all the way through from the top. The book of Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 16. Come on. Bind up the testimony. Seal the law among my disciples. Uh -huh. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. That's, wait, wait, what verse is that? Verse 17. Yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, let's go, uh, let's go back to Proverbs 18. All right. <laughs> Don't miss the point. Uh, today's topic is, is glorying in our infirmities. All right, we just um, going through a few examples, a few key points. Okay, read what you got. The book of Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 14. Uh -huh. The spirit of a man will sustain his infirmity. What's that spirit, brothers? The Holy Spirit. Come on. But a wounded spirit. But who, a what? But a wounded spirit. Come on. Who can bear? Who can bear? Meaning what? If you're not built up. You will fall during the time of trouble. You will fall during the time of trouble. Trouble, excuse me. Give me uh, Sirach chapter 7, verse 8. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, and the Apocrypha chapter 7 <coughs> and verse 8. Going into that uh, wounded spirit. Watch this. The book of Ecclesiasticus, or Sirach in the Apocrypha, chapter 7 and verse 8. Come on. Bind not one sin upon another. Uh-huh. For in one thou shalt not be unpunished. Meaning what? It's like a um what a domino effect. It's like a domino effect. So sometimes you get so weak in the flesh, you you transgress. But then you got that wounded heart. You got that heart that's feeling like, man, I came short anyway, so. Now's the time, and I might as well get it in. And now you're adding this sin, this sin, this sin, this sin. This. And now you're like, damn. Like, I don't even feel like myself. I'm, I'm like, like, who am I? Like it says in James, talking about looking into that mirror. You're like, who, who is this guy, man? I don't even recognize myself because you allowed it to get that bad. Give me 2 Ezra 16. Let's see what the scripture says about a wounded spirit. Second Ezra chapter 16 and start at um, 75. The book of Second Ezra chapter 16 and verse 75. Come on. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide. A lot of us, a lot of us trust ourselves more than God. And that's dangerous, man. When, you, when it says, be ye not afraid, neither doubt, for God is your guide. That it means exactly that. So if he says trust in him, that's what you got to do. But if we trust in ourselves rather than trusting in God, that means what? We believe in us more than the creator. 
Read on. Verse 76. Come on. And the God of them who kept, excuse me, who keep my commandments uh -huh. and precepts, saith the Lord God, Read. let not your sins weigh you down. You see that? That's that wounded heart. The scripture says, don't let your sins weigh you down. Meaning what? If you let your sins weigh you down, death is coming. It's the inevitable. So the Bible commands us, don't let it get to the point where you're wounded. Now, you might, what? A just man falleth how many times? <clears throat> Seven times, right? That doesn't mean he wounded. That just means he, you know, he hurt a little bit. He's hurt a little bit. It's not as, it's not as bad. It didn't penetrate all the way in there. The wounded, that's the dude that's, or the sister that's wounded upon death. Yeah, we may sprain our ankle a little bit every once in a while. But it's saying, all right, as soon as you sprain your ankle, you better take some rest. You better get that thing right so you can perform the next day. But that wound, that's going into, dang, he got to go to the ER. He's about to go. He's about to leave this place. Read it again. The book of 2nd Ezra, chapter 16 and verse 75. Come on. Be ye not afraid, neither doubt. For God is your God. Come on. And the God of them who keep my commandments mm -hmm. and precepts, saith the Lord God, let not your sins weigh you down. Read. And let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Uh-huh. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sin. That's, that's when you add this sin upon that sin upon that sin. Now you're bound. Meaning what? If you're bound, you are a what? You're what? I can't hear you. Slave. You're a slave. If you are bound, that means you are a slave. Unto who? Sin. Unto sin. Read it again. Verse 77. Come on. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins. Come on. And covered with their iniquities. Like as a field is covered over with bushes, and the path there of covered, excuse me, and the path there of covered with thorns. That no man may travel through. That no man may travel through. Meaning what? It's almost, you're almost done. Meaning what? Nobody can get through to you. No precept's going to work on you anymore because you're that far gone. Okay? You got something? Yes, sir. Actually, uh, give me Matthew chapter uh, 12. This is exactly what Christ says. Exactly going into what Cat was going over. Uh... The unclean spirit, 43. Uh, the, go ahead. The book of Matthew, chapter 12 and verse 43. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest, and findeth none. Now, that goes into uh, those of you that repented. And, and now that you repented, the unclean spirit leave you. Okay? Now, it start looking for another body to rest on, uh, upon. Okay, read on. Verse 44. Then he said, I will return into my house from whence I came out. Now, think about it. The, the reason why that unclean spirit say he will come back to his own house, that means that unclean spirit know you better than anybody else. That uh, spirit that you battling with know you more than anyone. It says, let, go, let me go back to my house. Read. And when he has come, he findeth it empty, swept, and garnished. Here you are. You're not study. Here you are. You're not keeping God's commandment. Here you are giving to your lust, giving to your affirmity. Read. Verse 45. Then goeth he and taketh with himself seven other spirits. He says, uh-uh. I'm not going to go in by myself this time. I'm going to go ahead and add additional ones so you can't get rid of me this time. I'm going to go ahead and add this that this now you were battling lust and now you come back with uh now you're thieves now you're a homo now you, you have so many other different uh spirit that you're battling against now that's yeah i like that point that you just bring out every last one of us in here if we're sincerely trying you had those months where you feel pretty strong in the spirit but then you got those months where you like is what did i do what did I do because I'm being attacked? And just like Officer said, I want to touch on the point you made. When it comes to a thief, is a thief going to try to break into your house when you're standing out front with a shotgun? No. When are you going to try to break into your house? When you're gone or when you're sleeping or when you at ease. That's, that's the importance of this class. The title is Glorying in Our Infirmities. 
a lot of times we like to glory on the gifts that God gave us or the attributes or look at my great work. No, 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 no. We need to learn to be quiet. And the only time we should glory is when what? When God allows us to give us the strength to overcome one of our battles. That's the only time you should glory. Don't glory and say, man, man, I think I did real good. No, no, be quiet. How about you glory? Don't speak until you say, let me, let me give you a testimony, man. The mo I've been dealing with this, but the most I got, hey, he strengthened me to overcome and get through this battle. You understand that? That's when we should glory. We shouldn't be glorying about ourselves. Who are we? We ain't nobody. We're unprofitable servants. It don't matter how much good we do, we're still unprofitable. Okay? Give me um, Joe 15 real quick. We're going to change gears a little bit. Give me the book of uh, Joe 15. <coughs> I'm going to start at verse uh, 2. The book of Job, chapter 15 and verse 2. Mm -hmm. Should a wise man utter vain knowledge? So the scriptures say, should a wise man, even though he's, you know, quote unquote wise, he has a, has a bachelor's doctorate or whatever it may be, or even in the scriptures, Read it again. The book of Job, chapter 15 and verse 2. Come on. Should a wise man utter vain knowledge? Vain knowledge. Meaning what? Of no profit. Meaning of no benefit. Come on. And fill his belly with the east wind? Oh, I feel satisfied. I know all of this. I've done all of this. Read. Should he reason with unprofitable talk? Come on. Or with speeches wherewith he can do no good? Meaning what? The laws are good. Meaning what? What we say doesn't matter. The only way our conversation is going to be good is if we're giving glory to who? The Most High. Come on. Verse 4. Yea, thou castest off fear and restraineth prayer before God. Mm -hmm. For thy mouth uttereth thine iniquity, and thou choosest the tongue of the crafty. Hey, you know how you can utter iniquity? When you praise yourself. That's how you can utter iniquity. <clears throat> you putting yourself before God. Read. Verse 6. Thine own mouth condemneth thee. That's why we got to watch what we say. That's why I say in James, it say, if the Lord will. That's why I tell brothers, oh, I'm going to do this. Like, Bruh, be quiet. Hush. That's iniquity. You ain't going to do nothing unless the Lord permit it. Read. Verse 6. Come on. Thine own mouth condemneth thee, uh -huh. and not I. Yea, thine own lips testify against thee. Your own lips can testify against you. That's why you have to become a new creature. The things that you normally said, you can't speak like that anymore. Because now we understand who our power is. We understand who the Almighty really is. Come on. Verse 7. Art thou the first man that was born? Or wast thou made before the hills? Read. Hast thou heard the secret of God? So he's asking these questions, rhetorical questions. Being like, nah, I wasn't the first man born. Nah, I don't know all the secrets of God. Mm -mm, I don't know all of those. Read. And dost thou restrain wisdom to thyself? So does wisdom come from you? Are you the true source? Read. What knowest thou that we know not? Uh-huh. What understandest thou which is not in us? Meaning what? Like Paul said in 1 Corinthians 8, we all have knowledge. So why are you so special? So we got to evaluate. We got, why am I the only one always yapping my gums when I'm just like the next man? You understand? Who, who am I? We have to watch what we say. Ah, uh, I want the one in Ezra. Give me Second Ezra real quick. The book of Second Ezra, chapter seven. Yeah, nineteen. Watch this. <coughs> the book of Second Ezra, chapter seven and verse nineteen. Mm -hmm. And he said unto me, "There is no judge above God." The scripture said, "There's no judge above God." Read, and none that hath understanding above the highest. You see that? So if none of us have understanding above the highest. Why would we dare praise ourselves? Why would we praise ourselves if none of us have understanding above the highest? Remember today's topic. It says, glorying in our infirmities. Okay? From there. Go to Judith 8. I like this one. Judith chapter 8. And I want you to read verse 14. Watch this. The book of Judith, chapter 8 and verse 14. Come on. For ye cannot find the depth of the heart of man, neither can you perceive the things that he thinketh. Come on. Then how can ye search out God? You see that thing right there? You struggle with the things on earth. So how can you even think about measuring yourself before God? 
Read. That hath made all these things. You see that thing right there? We have to re-examine ourselves. Go back to the drawing board. Get some, put some things in perspective. Read. And know his mind or comprehend his purpose. Let's stop right there. We're not, we can't comprehend why God kills certain of us and why he allows other ones to live. We don't know his purpose. We don't understand what his grand scheme is. So the best thing for us to do is just keep giving glory to him. All right. <clears throat> From there, let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians, the 11th chapter. All right. We're setting the stage uh, for what Paul is about to uh, share with us. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 11. I want you to start at verse 22. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 22. Uh-huh. Are they Hebrews? Come on. So am I. Uh-huh. Are they Israelites? So am I. Read. Are they the seed of Abraham? So am I. Mm -hmm. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. I am more. And labors more abundant. So he's saying, hey, we all Israelites. But if you want to get carnal and talk about boasting, about gifts and experience, nobody could stand next to Paul. So he was the greatest example because Christ was gone at this time. Okay, so Paul is Paul's explaining. You want to get carnal? All right. You want to measure up to me. Okay, read verse 23 again. Come on. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 23. Are they ministers of Christ? I speak as a fool. Read. I am more. In labors more abundant. In stripes above measure. Mm -hmm. In prisons more frequent. In deaths oft. So he's saying when it comes to works, no, you don't amount to me. When it comes to stripes being beat, you don't amount to me. I've been persecuted. Read. Verse 24. Uh-huh. Of the Jews, five times received, I 40 stripes, save one. You see that? He almost, he could have died five on five different occasions. Read. Verse 25. Thrice was I beaten with rods. Three times was he beaten with rods. Read. Once was I stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. Hey, when people get stoned, what's supposed to happen? You're supposed to die. But Paul lived through the st being stoned. So he's saying, all right, all right. I think y'all forgot. So let me remind you, okay, of my track record. All right, read on. So this is him speaking like a man. He's, he's carnal right now. He's being smart with him. Read. A night and a day I have been in the deep. Uh-huh. In Excuse me, verse 26. In journeyings after, in perils of waters, in perils of robbers. Come on. In perils by mine own countrymen. Being set up by his own people, read. In perils by the heathen, in perils in the city. In perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. Among false brethren. I'm not going to expound right there because I need to get to the point. Read on. Verse 27. In weariness and painfulness, in watchings often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. So Paul saying, hey, I've been through it all, brother and sister. If you have a problem with my apostleship, because that's what was going on. They kept testing Paul. Saying he wasn't worthy. But he's letting them know. Aren't, he says in another chapter, aren't you my fruit? Aren't, aren't you the, uh, the offspring to show that I'm a worthy of my apostleship? Okay, read on. Verse 28. Uh-huh. Beside those things that are without, that which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. See, he didn't just deal with the Corinthians. He dealt with, what, the Ephesians, the Thessalonians. He dealt with all of these different churches. He had to go travel, and he put his life on the line to get to all of these places, and they still had a problem with Paul. Read. Verse 29. Come on. Who is weak, and I am not weak? Uh-huh. Who is offended, and I burn not? Watch this. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmity. You see that thing right there? He says, I could glory about all these things. Okay? I could glory. If you're talking about being the most mighty prophet, I could do that. But he's saying, you know what? I'm going to glory about my infirmities, meaning what? The most high God, he got me through out of all of these things. So if we want to glory, don't talk about yourself. Talk about what God did for you. That's what you got to do. Read it again, verse 30. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 30. Come on. If I must needs glory, I will glory of the things which concern mine infirmities. Mm -hmm. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ which is blessed forevermore, knoweth that I lie not. Now watch this. The next chapter. No, no, no. I want 1 Corinthians 13. Excuse me. Watch what Paul says right here. We're almost done. It's going to be a short class. I just wanted to touch on a few points. 
Uh, start at verse 1. Watch this. The book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 13 and verse 1. Mm -hmm. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. Watch this, verse 2. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. You see that thing? Paul said, hey, I know I have all of these spiritual gifts. But at the end of the day, I still understand I'm nothing because God is everything. Y'all understand that? Yes, so, for example, when it comes time to um, give me Proverbs 27 and 1. I'm going to let the scripture say it better. And watch this. <clears throat> the, script, the title is Glorying in Our Infirmities. All right. This scripture that we're about to read, this is us a lot of times. So we have to take a step back and examine ourselves. And make sure that when we do glory, it's to the glory of God. Watch this. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27 and verse 1. Come on. Boast not thyself of tomorrow. That's what it's talking about. Actually, give me that in James. Because I, I mentioned it. We have to read it now. Uh, James, chapter 4, I think. Yeah. James 4 and 15. Watch this. Start at 14. Then we go right back to Proverbs 27. The book of James, chapter 4 and verse 14. Come on. Whereas ye know not what shall be on the morrow. For what is your life? What is your life? Because you don't understand uh, the Most High's ultimate purpose. What is your life? Read. It is even a vapor uh -huh. that appeareth for a little time. Come on. And then vanisheth away. Watch this. For that ye ought to say, if the Lord will, we shall live. Mm -hmm. And do this or that. So that's how we should speak, brothers and sisters. Okay, giving all glory and praises to the Most High. All right, now let's go back to Proverbs 27, 27 and 1. The book of Proverbs, chapter 27 and verse 1. Uh huh. And it reads Boast not thyself of tomorrow, for thou knowest not what a day may bring forth. Let another man praise thee. Let a what? Let another man praise thee. What's wrong with that? Meaning what? If your works are worthy of it, let somebody else speak of that thing, rather yourself. Just make sure you do your due diligence when it's your time to speak, that you do what? That you give God the glory. Now, if somebody's supposed to speak of you, so be it. And if they don't, so be it. All glory and praises go to the Father. All right? Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. All right? We got three, three more precepts and we're done. 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse uh, 6. The book of 2 Corinthians, chapter 12 and verse 6. Come on. And it reads, For thou I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. Mm -hmm. For I would say the truth, but now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. So Paul, he was not even that type of leader. He said, okay, no, no, no. I don't want you to get it twisted for one moment or second. This is not of me. This is of the Most High God. He said, no, I don't want y'all to think that I'm above what I am. I'm a man just like you. I battle just like you. I have infirmities just like you. Read it again. The book of 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 6. Come on. For though I would desire to glory, I shall not be a fool. Meaning what? Sometimes we want to toot our own horn. We want to speak about ourselves, meaning what we desire to glory. But he says, I'm not going to be a fool. Read. For I will say the truth. But now I forbear, lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. Read. Or that he heareth of me. Read on. And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Now this comes back to examining ourselves. Because guess what? If we didn't have these vices or we didn't have these infirmities, we would really believe that we all of that. I'll tell you this. This is how I know. We are... The most poorest, brokest people. We live in the worst conditions, but we still be stunting in the hood. What that means something wrong with us. We don't not rule this place, but we prideful and we hey, you know I just got this new jacket right here. What's something wrong with you? Something seriously wrong with you. We ride with, with the big rims, but we go into an apartment complex. <laughs> you understand? Let's let's finish this out. I got two more precepts. Watch this. Verse seven. At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh. So when it comes to our infirmities, when it comes to our trials, 
we got to think about it differently. We got to be like, oh, thank you for that. Because if, if I didn't have this, I would not be able to see who I really am. I hope y'all understand that. That's why the scripture says, glory in your infirmity. Meaning what? Bro, if I didn't have this infirmity, I would be hell bound. I hope y'all understand that. There's a difference between being wounded, okay, and just hurt, like in Proverbs 24 and 16, seven times. When you glory in your infirmity, you're thanking God, Father, I thank you for humbling me. Father, I thank you for putting me back in my place. I thank you for chastising me with this. Meaning what? In any situation, give the most out of glory for that thing. Read on. Verse 7. At least I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh, mm -hmm. the messenger of Satan to buffet me. That buffet is going to keep you in check. To buffet you just when you got puffed up. Okay, I'm going to put your trial right there. And you're like, oh, dang. Especially in the seat of judgment. I'm telling you, especially in the seat of judgment. If you have to issue out judgment, you got to be, you got to, hey, be patient with that thing. Because guess what? The next day, guess what can happen to you? The most I can send something your way. And now you're like, dang, I just passed judgment on somebody. And now I'm dealing with this. So we got to. We got to tread softly, but we got to give God the glory for that thing. Uh, read on. Lest I should be exalted above measure. Lest you be exalted above measure. You thinking like, okay, just because you sit in the judgment seat, you'll, you'll start thinking that, oh, I'm better than all these people. No. <laughs> That's not the situation. And I don't want none of y'all to think that for one second. We all in the fight. We just need what? God is a God of order. <laughs> That's what it is. This is how he set it up. But we all in the fight. Read. Verse 8. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. In his situation, it was that evil concupiscence because Paul didn't have a wife. So he said, God, please deliver me of this thing. But think about it. If he would have been delivered of that, he would have been perfect. Remember, Christ taught him face to face. So when it came to understanding, Paul, he had understanding. Tell, say God took that away from him. Now he's going to, he's really going to believe all the things that the people are telling him. But now, since he got kept it with him, he says, no, you're going to keep that for a reason. Read on. Verse 9. Come on. And he said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. Read. For my strength is made perfect in weakness. You see that for his strength is made perfect in weakness. Meaning what? If we wait on the Lord, he will make us whole. Meaning what? We still have to depend on God. No matter how much knowledge and wisdom we may have or think we may have, he set it up to the point where we always have to depend on him. Excuse me. Let's go to the book of Proverbs 24 and 10 real quick. And then give me 1 Peter 4 and 8 and then we'll close out. Proverbs 24 and 10. The book of Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 10. Come on. If thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. You see that thing? You're, you're wounded. If you faint in the day of adversity, your strength is small. Hey, don't succumb to it. Fight it. And glory that God is allowing you to go through it. Because he could have killed us. We could all be dead, but he left you alive. So give him the glory for your infirmity and battle through that thing. Y'all with me? All right. First Peter 4 and verse 8. It's a struggle, but it's something that's necessary. If we, want, if we want the victory over the nations, if we want to live forever, this is, this is the condition of the battle. Read that. The book of 1 Peter, chapter 4 and verse 8. Come on. And above all things have fervent, excuse me, fervent charity Come on. among yourselves. So it says, above all things, we must have charity amongst each other. Come on. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. You see that? If we have charity, meaning what? We treat each other correctly according to the laws. Meaning what? We can wipe away multitudes of sins, brothers and sisters. Read. Verse 9. 
Use hospitality one to another without grudging. With what? Without grudging. Without grudging. God loves a cheerful giver. Okay, read. Verse 10. As every man hath received a gift, even so minister the same one to another uh -huh. as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. So God gave us different gifts, but we have to minister them or uh, dish them out, giving praises to the Father, not boasting one another. Now watch this. Read verse 11. Verse 11. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. So after today's class, I hope you got a better understanding what 1 Peter 4 and 11 actually means. If it, it's not just talking about camp. It's not just talking about proving somebody wrong. If any man speak, let him speak. No. If you open your mouth, let it be as the oracles of God. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how we're men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.